Here is a regular size razor blade, and this is the Jimmy Duresta razor blade. I bought this giant Jimmy Duresta razor blade, and I use it to open my Amazon packages. I also have a couple of these utility knives that I really like the design of. In this video, I'm going to make this large scale utility knife that fits the Duresta razor blade. Hi everyone, my name is Zach, and if you're like me, you have a lot of creative project ideas, but sometimes they get trapped inside your head. Here on Bite Size Engineering, I make ridiculous projects like this large scale utility knife to get you excited about making things and unleashing your inner maker. I just disassembled the utility knife and I took pictures of the two main parts so that I could import them into the software and use that as a base for my model. The construction of this knife is actually pretty simple. It's made up of kind of a holder part where you slide in the razor blade and then the handle is made out of layers of sheet metal. I think it's like a stainless steel. There's a center pin in the handle and then the holder of the razor blade kind of rotates around that and the knife will close completely like that. So I'm going to try to replicate all of that in the big model. Let's head over to the neighborhood of Make Believe so I can talk about the 3D model. First you can see I have the Duresta razor blade and it slides into that front holder part. So I'm going to sandwich that razor blade between the three pieces with the center part being hollow so that the razor blade can slide in and then the outer two pieces kind of sandwich that together. The front holder piece is connected to the back half using a pin like I talked about earlier. So I'm going to have to find kind of a large scale tube that's threaded on the each end. I went to the hardware store and I actually picked up a piece of black pipe that's threaded and it's tapered so I'm not sure if it's gonna work but until I find something better I'm gonna use this. The handle part in the back is also made out of like eighth inch stainless steel but instead of being sandwiched close together there's some spacers in there that allow the knife to fold back inside and so I'm gonna have to find some spacers that are the right size. The final piece to this are the scales or the little outer pieces on the handle. That's what I like most about the design that I have is that the scales kind of have this cool industrial look with all these interesting geometric lines on them so I want to kind of replicate that look and so I'm going to probably 3D print these out of plastic, but if you were to make something like this, you could carve it out of wood or put your logo in it or have it laser engraved or whatever, but I'm just probably going to 3D print them. Before I make the final version of these parts in stainless steel, I wanna make sure that I have all the dimensions and the holes in the right place, and I wanna make sort of a mock-up prototype of this utility knife and make sure that it kind of folds up before I move forward. Now, up until this point, I've kind of used my 3D printer for this type of prototyping. If I have a 3D model on the computer, I know that my 3D printer will print it out with all of the parts in the right place and I can test fit everything. But if you've been watching the channel, you'll know that I'm building a laser cutter and I have that up and going out in the garage. And so what I'm going to do is cut out some of these prototype pieces using my lasers. And this is really what I wanted a laser cutter for, was to be able to cut out pieces and, and check dimensions and check the fit of everything before I proceed with like the final complete parts of the project. So that's what I did last night. I had my friend Nick come over and he helped me cut out some of the pieces on the laser cutter for this utility knife. If you watched my last video, even though this machine is brand new, it still had some problems with the wiring that I had to fix. Even after fixing those problems, the machine still wouldn't keep the water cold. So Nick and I opened up the machine and he discovered something pretty shocking. He was kind of poking and prodding around and accidentally pulled off a connector on a whole bundle of wires. He discovered that the crimp connector on all of the neutral wires was loose and so they were just barely being held together. Luckily the solution was pretty simple. All I did was replace that crimp connector with his lever lock one and everything seemed to work just fine after that. We plugged in the machine and we saw that the water temperature was going down. So with that we were able to start making cuts. I've got the laser all set up and it's ready to start cutting parts out of this material. I'm using an eighth inch hardboard material because it's really cheap and it's good for prototyping because it doesn't cost very much. If I mess up, I can always just cut some more out. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut the next parts for the handle. Here are the parts that I have cut so far and here are the regular utility knife parts. So the parts I just cut on the laser are for the handle and this will kind of go like this. So this will stack on top and then I'll put this threaded tube through here and then the other part of the handle will go on like that. I would love to make some of these parts out of metal but my fabrication skills are pretty limited so that's why I'm going to use Send Cut Send. Send Cut Send is a really cool service that I just started using recently. 
You just upload your design to their website and depending on the material you choose, they'll either CNC cut, water jet, or laser cut out your design. And then they just ship the finished parts right to your door. It's super simple. That's exactly what I did for this project. I need some of these parts out of stainless steel and I don't have the capability to do that here in house. So I uploaded my design and within a few days I got the finished parts shipped right to my door. I'm gonna have all of the design files for this project available for free on my website. Maybe you don't have a project that's ready to use their service. If that's the case, you can just go to my website and download all the design files for this project, or you can even download the files for the spool rack that I made several weeks ago. At the very least, you should just take these free design files and upload them to their website to see what their checkout process is like. And I bet that some point down the road, you'll have a project that comes up where you'll wanna use their services. Send Cut Send is a new sponsor for this channel. They've been hugely supportive of this channel and I would love to keep working with them, but in order for it to be a mutually beneficial relationship, I need your help. The best way to let them know that my channel is worth sponsoring is to go down in the description and click on the link. And when you're ready to make a purchase, you'll get 15% off your order. Please don't underestimate how helpful will be for you guys to go down in the description, click on that link, and check out the sponsor. Thank you to Send Cut Send for supporting my channel, and thank you guys for supporting the sponsors. I wouldn't be able to do these type of things without you. The next part that I have to make is the piston inside the knife. That's the part that slides in and out that allows it to lock the knife open or closed. So if you look closely, there's it's made up of two different pieces, but there's kind of a rod that slides inside of a tube. So I need to make those two parts at scale. So to do that, I cut a couple of pieces of steel. I've got a 3 8 inch piece of round bar and then a half inch tube here. And those slide right perfectly into, into one another. And I'll have a spring inside there to make that spring loaded to kind of push that piston out. I need to weld these parts to the other parts of the knife. And in order to do that, I need a welder. Since I don't have one, I've come to my friend Nick's house. He's graciously let me borrow his welder. I haven't welded in a really long time. Luckily, it doesn't have to hold a lot of weight or it's not like structural or anything. It just needs to tack those two pieces together. Um, so my my crappy welding should be sufficient. Let me give you a closer look at what I'm about to do. So one of these parts, I'm going to use this um, hex standoff and I'm gonna weld this 3 8 inch rod to that and that's gonna be the part that moves back and forth that's kind of spring loaded. For the other part, I have this half inch tube and I need to weld that to this small nut. Yeah, I'm worried about the wire feed coming out and like bumping it, so. Yeah. Okay, you ready? I thought I'd try that cool trick, it didn't work. <laughs> Okay, can I just close my eyes to tack it? Yeah. Okay, you ready? Didn't do anything, here we go. That did something. All right, I'm gonna try to do the other side now. <laughs> that looks terrible. Let me try a little bit more. Is more better or is more <laughs> less is more? Uh, more on the, the nut itself. Yeah, okay. Yeah, Ooh, this is jammed now. This is, how am I jamming it so much, Nick? What am I doing wrong? Try pushing it in. Hey. That was a little better. After a failed attempt by me, I'm having Nick do the welding because he's much better at it than I am. Just slightly less amateur. Slightly less amateur. What happened to tacking it, Nick? <laughs> that looks good. Here's what the two parts ended up looking like after we welded them. Nick did his very best to cover up all of my terrible welding, but I still think these are gonna to need to be cleaned up, so that's what I'm gonna do next.
At this point, I think I'm ready to assemble the handle for this utility knife. Here are the parts that came from Sen Cut Sen. This is a stainless steel and it turned out awesome. It's also really heavy. As I pulled these out of the package, I'm like, this knife is gonna weigh like a ton. The first thing I did was put the back scale on and then attach it with the three screws. The next thing I need to do is thread on these little standoffs. The last thing that I need to do is to cut out the pieces that hold the Duresta razor blade. They're gonna be cut out of clear acrylic so that you can see his logo. Here's what the knife looks like all complete. For comparison, here's the utility knife that I modeled it after. In case you're curious, the scale of the Duresta razor blade is like 3.16, so it's not like a round integer number, so I had to scale everything up by about that much. I'm kind of curious to see how long this ended up being and how much it weighs. With the razor blade installed, the total length is 20 and 1 quarter inch. I've got my scale here and I folded up the knife just to make it a little bit smaller and the weight is 4.28 pounds. So what is that in grams? That's almost two kilograms, 1.94 kilograms. So imagine one of those small five pound exercise weights and that's about what this weighs. As you can see, the opening mechanism works the same way as the regular utility knife. It's spring loaded and you just kind of pull this back and pull the knife out and it locks it into place. Now, admittedly, my mechanism isn't as tight of tolerance as the, as the manufactured one, so there is a little bit of slop in here, and I tried working that out, but I couldn't get it to work with the same reliability as the regular knife, but this is good enough. I think the idea still comes across. 
I really like the contrast of this design because you have the metal blade and then some clear plastic and then some 3D printed plastic with some metal accents. It really turned out nice. At this point, I've kind of accidentally started making all of these big scale projects. That was never my intention for this channel. I didn't want to be like the guy that builds big things. And of course, the irony is not lost that my channel name is Bite Size and here I am making big things. I've got a whole playlist here that you can click on and watch through all of those big projects. My two favorite videos in this playlist are the large scale Arduino board as well as the large scale Raspberry Pi board. Both of those things were fully functional. So if you haven't seen those, go check them out by clicking on the playlist. I want to say a huge thanks to all of the channel members listed below. They make all of these projects possible. To become a channel member, you can go to patreon.com forward slash bite size or click the join button below.